Going back to the fifth century in the Collegia in Rome, what elite education is about is one thing. Well, it's several things leading to one thing. The management of crowds, the management of masses. Let me show you how radically you've been dealt with in your lifetime if you're, if you're somewhat younger than me, which you must be. Uh, in uh, 1945, in a coal mining town in western Pennsylvania, everybody in sixth grade read Caesar's Gallic Wars in translation, and everybody with ambition in ninth grade read Caesar's Gallic Wars in Latin. Gallia Asomnus Duisa and Partes Tres, Corum Unum and Colon Belgae, Aleam Aquitani, Qui Absorum Nostra. Ah, lost the word there. Anyway, my brain's coming apart. It's called entropy. Uh, why do you think we don't spend considerable time on Caesar's Gallic Wars at the moment? I'm really serious here. Even though you hear a uh, certain sandbagging consciousness and the sarcasm in my voice. Why don't we read Caesar's Gallic Wars in 2005? What's it about? I bet some people here have read it. What's it about? Thank you. Who are you? It is the textbook of how a small disciplined force can overwhelm a huge, brave force 50 times larger than itself by finding the cracks in the organization and flipping this side, flipping that side, moving, until finally you've got this, this political, ideological hornet's nest stirred up where the only way to survive is to, is to hang out with the Romans. That's why it isn't read anymore. It's a textbook. I'll tell you this, you don't go through an elite private boarding school without reading it, but you will go through the best school in Albany, New York, without even hearing that it exists. Let's take another book that used to be in 1945, not read by every elementary school kid, but I'll tell you, huge chunks of it by almost every high school kid and if you got to college by every college kid, it was written in 1640. The author was a fellow named Thomas Hobbes, and the book was Leviathan, which, which contains among the millions of pulling back the curtain so you can see the machinery, this particular insight. I mean, it's a lot. I'm not doing Hobbes justice by squeezing down to this that wherever power seems to exist, it never exists there. Let me repeat that. Wherever power seems to exist. The first time you saw Ronald Reagan or you saw George Bush, you had to have done what everyone else, shake your head and said, I can't believe that guy's in charge. Well, if you'd read Thomas Hobbes, You'd know he wasn't in charge. But then neither was Bill Clinton or John F. Kennedy. None of them are in charge. It's a figurehead position to draw flack. Now let me get to the next part. No one's in charge in the Senate or the House either. Those are satellites, subordinate figurehead positions so that you can throw bricks at this guy's window and send your, your uh, paycheck to this guy's window. Now how come, how come if 400, well, let me see, 365 years ago, any, everybody who was anybody knew that this was one of the biggest manuals on how to see reality that existed. And there hasn't been a year in between when the elites of this planet haven't read Leviathan. How come, take a hundred gifted and talented kids out of high school in uh, Albany, you'll be lucky if anybody's heard of Leviathan, 
I'll bet you six dollars to one that no one will have read it if one of them's heard of it. How did this happen? Surely you don't think because we had more important things to teach people than how our lives are managed outside of our conscious understanding. These aren't radical books by famous lefties. These are middle-of-the-road books by brilliant minds who transformed government life on Earth. Are there more of those books? There must be a hundred.